Now let's turn, let's turn, let's turn, uh, er, uh you know, mm -hmm. on our axis here and talk about Skoder, the man of the hour. Amish don't talk, so Skoder's just always on film. I'm just kidding, Amish. Whoa. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. You released a bombshell, I don't even know what to call it, masterpiece? <laughs> uh, yeah, something like that. How, how, how do I how do I explain it, guys? It is a one hour. This is the first episode. He's got 12 episodes coming out right now. Two are out. And basically, he read 20 books about happiness. The most important topic probably most of us can think about or can spend time on. One of them. And he summarizes the smartest people in the literature. Now, Will, I've got a lot of questions for you, but... First of all, thank you. For, you did it for the culture. You did it for the people. Thanks, Will. It's a great video. I, wa I, I, like, I watched the second one twice, and I'm, like, learning so much from it, man. I tried to watch it, like, kind of passively, but it's like, no, you got to watch this. And, like, I have screenshots where I'm, like, I'm just, like, reposting little clips on my Instagram. It's so tight, dude. It's very smart. The graphics? Ah, present. Hey, okay, so it's let's, so so let's actually grill him because, you know what? Okay. The, the laughing, the drip, we're about getting to the heart of the matter. <clears throat> so hit us with this, okay? Will, if you had to sum, I know the whole reason you made a 12 part series is because summarizing it is extremely difficult. So with that yeah. in mind, summarize a road a roadmap to happiness for people out there who are feeling depressed. What are some key things in their life? Obviously, it's a multifaceted issue. But what are some key things in their life they can change? Um, there are, I think one thing that the self-help industry actually gets right is the focus on outlook. There's a lot of things that you can do with like your belief systems and uh, the way you think about things. And for some people that's harder than it is for others. You know, if you like are someone who has a, a regular amount of negative emotion, it's pretty hard to change like your mindset, but there are things you can do to do that. I mean, the classic, the classic ones are like CBT and um, uh, ACT therapy. Cognitive and, behavioral therapy. And yeah, yeah. Cognitive behavioral therapy. And there's obviously meditation and mindfulness. And there's a lot of other outlooks that you can focus on. That's like that goes all the way back to the ancients. That's very uh, a very Buddhist and Stoic idea, which is basically like your interpretations are your world. So uh, if you can control your interpretations, you control your world. And that's what self-help uh, focuses on and that's fine. But uh, to an extent they focus on it maybe a little too much. And right. there's a lot of other important things that people should be focusing on. I think people naturally focus on security and everybody has a problem with security. Uh, everybody's always trying to have security. One thing that I think uh, people misunderstand about security is that it's perceived, right? So, uh, you know, in a small town in Mexico, your net security might be $4,000 and you feel good about that. In the right. US, that's not happening. Right. Um, right. And so there's different levels of security, but it is perceived security. So some people can... Uh, feel good with a fairly empty bank account, but most people don't feel that way. Most people want security. And one thing to understand about security is that it's it's a deficit need, which means more security doesn't make you happier. It just keeps you from experiencing negative emotion. That's why you're the king. Uh, which is I didn't deal. even know a deficit need was. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, another uh, big thing is to really introspect about your values and your interests, uh, because when you want to motivate yourself, it's really hard to do things that you don't value or that uh, you don't enjoy or are interested in. And if you are constantly trying to push yourself to do things that you don't value, then you're gonna have a terrible time. And so you really need to think about the things that you value and bring them into your life a lot more. Um, and uh, if you value things that keep bringing you unhappiness, then maybe it's time to think about your values. Uh, yeah. And uh, that's a big one. The let big, me, let me really, ask you. Uh, let me ask you something else. Yeah. 
What is yeah. something that people get wrong? Like you see them take a certain approach and you're like, you're going to just miss it. I have a thought, but I, I would w- want to hear you first. Yeah. Well, um, there's, I, I would say people miss, uh, like the types of motivations that they have. So like extrinsic motivations tend to be like money, fame, power, that kind of thing. And a lot of people think those success, those things will bring them happiness. And they may for a little bit, but a lot of those things are very ephemeral. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you get to the next thing and then you need to get to the next level of success and then the next level of success. And things that are kind of like, I mean, some of them are intuitive, but people forget about them, uh, are following things that intrinsically motivate you. Um, things like being a part of a community, um, things like uh, pursuing an activity that you're good at. People tend to, especially on the internet, when you're comparing yourself to other people all the time, people focus on their weaknesses and everybody's different and everybody has their own strengths and uh, people should really be focusing on their strengths, what they're good at and sort of capitalize on those rather than uh, always be like, oh, I got to be like the Navy SEAL and be really disciplined and fix all my weaknesses. And there's a place for that, but like, you're probably really good at something and you should really focus on that. 100%, man. What do you say to people who right now, I do feel like there is a bit of a thing in our culture where it's like, you're not allowed to tell someone to work on their depression. Like, I agree with you, man. You got to work on it. But some people do get offended. They're like, how dare you tell me that it's just my outlook? It's like, no, I'm screwed and there's nothing that can help me. And what they say and what they say is, hey, don't you think I've thought of that? Don't you think I've thought of to work on my depression? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think uh, the response to someone who says, don't you think I've thought of that? I mean, me personally, I have things that I want to do and I need to be constantly reminded of them. So I I just think like, yeah, you've thought of it, uh, but it is important to have people around you who are reminding you to do it. Um, Yeah, this is great that you talk about it. Thinking is not doing is is is, is obviously a big issue with all of anything you learn on the internet, right? Even my series, right? You could watch the whole thing and you can think about it, but if you don't do anything- Knowledge is by itself is just kind of meaningless. Yeah. yeah, and I like that you're kind of hinting at that it's one, a process, but also there are exercises. There are things you can do. There are exercises and they're so smart and they're so insightful. Like there are certain meditations and there are certain types of therapy that can really get your head around maybe an issue you're having that's causing so much inefficiency, sadness, sadness, obviously first, but like inefficiency maybe because you're just, it, it's like, think of like all the wasted energy on being mad at someone or being depressed. It's like, it's yeah. something that's worth fixing. And, and uh, dude, it was, it was great in the video, though. You, you referenced a lot of that stuff. But it's not like a get-rich-quick, easy fix by my course. It's like not legit. at all. Yeah, can, no. I, can I pay I you a compliment, and... Will? Sure. I'm dying to – I've been <coughs> dying to get this out, okay? Okay. What I think, what I think uh, people get wrong, and I personally got wrong before watching your series – is that happiness isn't that worth thinking about because you can't get happy by thinking, let me get happy. And while that's true, you rightfully point out, okay, that's true, but we can understand the directions to go in to be happy, even if you don't have to think like, I'm going to be happy. There are ways that you will become more happy over time if you pursue these things. Like you talk about getting in a flow state, how that's powerful for being happy. It's not the only thing that leads to happiness, but having some kind of hobby or some activity where you get in that flow state is powerful just to have in your life maybe once a day or once a week or, you know, thinking about those things can actually move that needle meaningfully. And so many people either do one of two things. They either go the hedonistic route where they're like, well, life, I'm just going to die anyway. So let me just go pursue pleasure. And they do that thing. Or Sort of like me, I kind of reject, you know, I think that's a losing strategy in the long run. So I say, well, let me never think about it and not worry about it at all. And that's also a bad move because happiness isn't just about pleasure. Your point is, is, and and life also isn't simply about 
it's about purpose, but also you, it's nice to have purpose with also happiness. And that's what you bring to the table. Yeah. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. So if, I mean, this requires a little bit of vocabulary in the field, but there's, a, as we go through the series, there's uh, two concepts. Um, one is called hedonia. You just, you would say like affect, right? Yeah. Emotion. And then you have eudaimonia, which is like the classic flourishing from Aristotle. Like you lived a very purposeful life and the goal of the series is actually to combine those, right? Hmm. Um, and make sure that you are living a life that fulfills both of those things. And that that is sort of the the thrust of the whole thing because I think in our consumerist culture, we've kind of got caught in the hedonia area. And then you have sort of people who are very Protestant work ethic -y type of people who go full purpose, but they never- They never try to never work feel. on their happiness. Yeah, and then they sort of like are on their deathbed and they're like, oh crap. Um, and so the goal of the series is kind of to, I don't think it's you're, it's possible to align them perfectly because as you said, like, you know, sometimes driving through your purpose you know, it's it's not like you're going to have the best positive affect all the time. Um, the point of it is that you you feel at home with yourself. Mm. And the emotions of feeling at home with yourself are far more important than pleasure and, you know, uh, joy. Cars. Um, cars. Dude, right. that, that's such an important thing for our audience, too, uh, because a lot of people, I mean, just in general, like people are selling their courses with like, hey, I got a Lamborghini. So what do you want? It's like, you're not, your, your video explains it very well that like, okay, so you're going to be happy for a week. You're going to spend 80,000, $150,000 for one week. And you're going to be over it. What a waste of money. He's actually talking yeah. about it right now in like the series, <laughs> uh, like on the, what's on screen right now, it's called the hedonic treadmill where eventually yeah. you just, you're kind of always searching for more. And your point is, is that there's this other way of looking at happiness which is you basically get, I like how you do it. You basically point out that it's almost like you're getting these sliders in alignment. I kind of like that visualization a lot. Let right. me see if I can yeah. pull it up here. Uh, it's beautiful art. Yeah, Explains it's it so solid well. art. Here we go. Like this. And basically you're somewhere on this line and you're yeah. trying to get your cheerfulness and joy and exuberance and flow. And you explain each one of those up to the max. So yeah, man, that yeah. is a, it is a tight series. It's really good.